The next detail that we want to discuss is a further generalized alpha parametrization. We already saw in the last lecture that we need a new formalism to treat numerators because in general numerators appear not only in theories like QED where we have a Q slash and P slash in propagator numerators or other theories where the vertex factors are momentum dependent. Even in scalar theories, the counterterms can become momentum dependent because of quadratic divergencies. So we need to be able to treat numerators also in our alpha parametrization, and today we will develop the formalism for that. Let us again go through the definition of what we have. So we look at a connected graph for which we know the loop number is i minus v plus 1. The incoming external momenta for each vertex are pi, and i runs from 1 to v. v is the number of vertices. The propagator momenta are called lk. k uh, runs over the number of lines from 1 to i. We also uh, want to have vertex positions in position space. We call them yi. i again runs from 1 to v. Then we have an incidence matrix, capital B, I, K. And we have reduced independent variables, P, I, underscore, and small B, I, K. And so as a choice here to make our life simple, of course, by reordering, we uh, choose to remove the vertex, capital V. So the last vertex gets removed, and so our in the reduced uh, sets, our index just runs from 1 to V minus 1. And then we can also uh, basically look at reduced positions in position space. Because of translational invariance, uh, physics can only depend on differences between positions. And so we can again single out the last vertex with coordinate yv and look only at the differences which we call zi, uh, which is the difference yi minus yv. And then i again runs from 1 to v minus 1. So we have these independent um, differences between positions. So these variables can be used in our graphs. And now we want to calculate loop integrals with non-trivial momenta. So let us begin by uh, writing down what we want to calculate. I full is the full integral, which is defined as a loop integral over loop momenta k1 to k sub l with denominator d1 up to di as before, and numerator is now an exponential function e to the i u k l k. So we have introduced new variables u. For each internal line, there is such a u variable. And by taking derivatives with respect to u, we can uh, get an arbitrary numerator, which is an arbitrary polynomial in any of the internal lines. Then we multiply with a momentum conserving delta function in d dimensions, like this. This is our full integral. And uh, just one comment. The measure is as before. Um, but without the factor of mu to the power 2 epsilon. So we leave out the factor of mu today um, because that makes our calculation more uniform. Then the quantity without the delta function up to here is obviously the interesting part, and we will call that just the integral i, which we actually want. Sorry for the double notation. I now means the integral, but I also means the number of internal lines, but I hope there cannot be any confusion between this. So that is our starting expression. So and we want to develop a full alpha parametrization for this. So as I said, if we take minus i, d by d u k mu uh, various times, then we get arbitrary numerators. And of course, at the end, we can set all the u variables to zero and still get arbitrary numerators. So this is one thing. Now, uh, as an overview, what is our strategy to calculate this? 
we want to introduce an alpha parametrization, but actually, uh, as you have already seen in our example uh, last week, we need to back up a little bit. And so what we will do is the following sequence of steps. First, we will do alpha parametrization for all of the lines, but then we uh, take a few steps back and actually introduce integrals not only over the loop momenta, but integrals over all the line momenta, L1, or all the LKs. And we also go back into position space, where we have position space integrals over all the vertices. So like in quantum field theory, when one actually starts deriving how loop integrals looks like, at first we have position space Feynman rules, then we do a Fourier transformation and introduce integrals over all line momenta. Then uh, this gives delta functions and cancels a few of those integrals. Um, and then we obtain the loop integrals. And here we take all these steps backwards and introduce all the original integrals and then reshuffle them in suitable ways. And uh, namely, we will then first do all the line momentum integrals over all lines, not only about the loop momenta, but all the line momenta, and only afterwards we do the position space integrals. So this is the opposite order to what one does normally in deriving Feynman rules, uh, but that will give us the uh, most useful expression for the alpha parametrization. So actually, we can immediately do a few of those steps. Namely, we can introduce the alpha parametrization immediately for all the propagators. And uh, by doing that, we obtain minus i to the power capital I for each internal line. Then we have alpha parametrization integrals, alpha 1 to alpha i, so one integral for each internal line. Um, and let me write here e to the i u k l k stays what it is. And then instead of the denominators, we get plus i uh, alpha k times dk summed over k, of course. This is our expression that we always had. So this combination gives just a denominator um, for all these factors. But then we can immediately go on. Instead of the loop integrals, we now have all the line integrals, L1 up to L capital I, and all the vertex integrals, Y1 up to y, uh, Yv. And uh, what we need for that is just in the exponent uh, what we had when we derived the Feynman rules in the first place, namely e to the minus i times the incoming momentum into vertex i times the coordinate yi. That was actually uh, what happened in the course of derivation of the Feynman rules. And so, as you hopefully remember, the integrals over all these coordinates y give us delta functions corresponding to momentum conservation at each vertex. One of those delta functions gives the overall momentum conserving delta function that we have over there. And all the other delta functions get canceled by those integrals over the line momenta. And what remains is all the loop integrations. And so here we have taken those same steps backwards. So this is our next step in our integral calculation. Maybe it's sufficient space to write here some comments. So the definition is where our momentum Q into vertex I is of course the external momentum P into the vertex plus given our incidence matrix B I K times the momentum L K for the line number L. And so the product Q into vertex I times the position Y I can be written as, uh, first of all, pi times 
why I, but now we can also introduce the variables z, and so that gives us the reduced momentum pi reduced times the differences variable z i plus the reduced incidence matrix b i k uh, times um, l k times the variable z i and then we have to add our um, position y number v and the position y number v gives us y number v times all the sum over all the external momenta uh, not reduced but complete plus the full incidence matrix b i k times line momentum l k. And so here you see that actually this one here by construction is zero uh, because that is summed over i. Summation over i means sum over all the rows of the incidence matrix which is um, identical to zero. Therefore, this term drops out. And what remains is just a variable y v times the sum over all external momenta, so that the integral over this variable gives us that momentum conserving delta function over there. So that means what we do in order to further compute our integral is we do a substitution. So we substitute our integration variables yi to um, zi plus yv, and then we have integrals over one special coordinate yv and uh, v minus one coordinates zi. And the exponent depends on these variables in different ways, so that the integral over the special variable yv gives us just a delta function corresponding to the overall momentum conservation. That means this integral over that variable yv can be treated in a special way and uh, it means for us that uh, we can now obtain a formula directly for the integral i without this delta function. So remember, i full was the thing with delta function, i is the one without delta function, and this i is obtained if we forget about the integral over y v, but only integrate over the remaining variables. So this is then minus i to the power capital I, then all the alpha integrals, all the z integrals, from 1 to v minus 1, and all the integrals over the line momenta, L1 up to Li. And the integrand is an exponential function, which I call e to the i w0. And what is actually this w0? The w0 is the exponent if we plug into this uh, Q that formula here. So it's UK times LK from here plus alpha K times DK from here. And then from here we get the ZI dependent parts. Minus PI reduced times ZI minus BIK um, z i l k. Always summation is implied, of course. What did we achieve? We have now achieved that our integral is a Gaussian integral again over the line momenta, because the exponent as a function of the loop, uh, sorry, of the line momenta l k is a quadratic function. Since uh, this here depends on l k square, here LK linear, and here also LK linear. So we can evaluate the integral in the well-known way by completing the square and integrating in a trivial way over all these I uh, line momenta. And then we have a remaining integral over all the Z variables. So what we need to do is to uh, write this explicitly as such a quadratic form as we know it.
So what is actually the result of this quadratic form? So if we go on here, so let's write it. What is the coefficient of LK square? The LK square appears here, so this is LK square minus MK square. So LK square appears with coefficient alpha K, nothing else. Then we have a linear term, plus two times LK times a linear term, and the linear term is, first of all, from U, one half UK, and then here from that, minus one half CIBIK. And of course, let us call this one JK, so this is uh, like the J we had before, then we have 2 LK times JK, and we can easily complete the square in terms of this um, abbreviation. And then what remains is minus PI underscore times ZI um, minus K prime, and this K prime comes from the masses here and the plus I epsilon in those propagators. And uh, that is the same as it always was, and I will not write uh, explicitly what it is. So we have this simple form, and it's a quadratic uh, function of LK square, and therefore we immediately know what the result is, because we have calculated such integrals many times. So we can evaluate all the integrals over LK and obtain the following expression. Minus I to the power capital I, all the alpha integrals remain. All the Z integrals remain. But this is evaluated, and what we get for each integral is one factor I to the power one minus D over two times four pi to the power minus D over two, and overall to the number of integrals, which is a power I, capital I. And remember, I did not put a factor mu to the power two epsilon, so uh, previously here we had always this mu factor, but I didn't put it um, to make our life a little bit easier here. So, but then, what remains is the determinant, the determinant to the power minus d over two, but the determinant of what? The determinant of the matrix multiplying our uh, momenta squared, and that is the matrix which is simply consisting of all the alphas put into the diagonal. So let's just say alpha, which is the matrix consisting of all the alphas in the diagonal. Then times e to the power i w1, and this e to the power i w1, uh, we have now to determine which arises from completing the square. Let's put a frame around it to make it look a little bit nicer. So what is this W1 that we need now? It arises from completing the square. So in complete generality, like it always was, we get minus J uh, times that matrix, which is here simply alpha K to the minus one times JK. So previously we said J transpose times M to the minus one times J, but uh, that matrix is now just a diagonal matrix with all the alphas, plus the rest, and the rest is just the second line over here, so PI underscore times CI minus K prime. That's just it, and our JK is given here explicitly. It's this uh, simple combination consisting out of U's and uh, position variables zi and the incidence matrix small b. So, now our next task is we still have some integrals over the z variables. So what is uh, what do we need to do? We need to have a look how does our integrand depend on the z variables. So this determinant here doesn't depend on the z variables this exponential e to the i w1, it depends on the z variables, but how does it depend on z? It is again a quadratic form in all the z variables, so we again get a Gaussian integral. We just have to reshuffle it to make explicit the dependence on z, but it's clearly quadratic because we have here quadratic dependence on this jk. This is linear in z, 
and that is also linear in Z, so we get a quadratic form. We can again complete the square and then easily calculate all the Z integrals and then we have it, then we have our final result. So just to make it explicit, we need some space in order to do this calculation and reshuffle this form uh, to make explicit the dependence on the Z variables. Okay, let's just do it. So our W1 can now be rewritten. So our J has always this one half, so J square, we can factor out minus one over four. And then uh, we get um, four terms. So maybe in matrix notation, we can write it like this. Z um, transpose times B transpose times alpha to the minus one times B times Z. So in an index free notation, this is the product of Z times B with appropriate index multiplied with alpha times again Z times B in this um, index notation. And, sorry, uh, the transpose is uh, the opposite, so it's like this, then, then it is correct. So Z transpose times B times alpha to the minus one times the transpose of this. Then the other terms are, so uh, the Z times the U term, gives a relative minus, and we can uh, put the two together, then we get minus two times z transpose times b times alpha to the minus one times uh, the vector of all the u variables. Then uh, the two u's together uh, gives just plus um, u transpose times alpha to the minus one times u. That is all multiplied with one over four and that originates from this j squared times alpha to the minus one term. We have minus uh, z transpose in this notation times the vector p underscore minus k prime. Let's give it an abbreviation, minus one over four times Z transpose times a matrix capital A times Z and the matrix is given by B alpha to the minus one times B transpose. Then plus two times Z transpose times a vector, let's call it small j. So that thing here plus this is our vector uh, small j. Uh, that is our bracket, and then we have this additional term which is independent of Z. So minus one over four times U transpose alpha to the minus one times U minus K prime. And so here we have it explicitly, our quadratic form in the variable Z with some abbreviations, and I will later once again write down what the abbreviations mean, but here you can read it off. So that is A b alpha to the minus one times b transpose, and our j is minus this one here, minus this, um, plus uh, this p uh, with the appropriate prefactor. So maybe let's record it here, so small j is equal to minus b alpha to the minus one times u, plus two times uh, P underscore. Now we have it, we have our integral represented in the form, the integrand is e to the i w1. W1 is a quadratic form in the integration variable z, and we need to integrate over all these z variables. So the integral is of exactly the same type as our loop integrals before, even though it's a position space integral. The only difference, which is a small difference, is the, the negative sign in the exponent. So whenever we had plus i before in the result to some power, we will now get minus i to a certain power in the result. And we need to keep track of this prefactor one over four. So we can do our dz i integrals. Note 
minus i instead of plus i. And uh, then also note another difference. In the momentum space integrals, we always had this factor 1 over 2 pi to the power d for each momentum integration. And we took that into account when we obtained this factor here in the result. But our position space integrals do not have this factor. So we get a relative factor from this here compared to our previous results. So if we take all of this into account, then we obtain our integral is minus i to the power i. Then the alpha integrals, alpha 1 to alpha i. The z integrals are now carried out, and the result gives minus i to the power i minus d over 2 times 4 pi to the power minus d over 2. And all of this comes to the power v minus 1 because we have v minus 1 z integrals. Okay, and this is what I explained before. Then the factor 2 pi, the relative factor 2 pi is 2 pi to the power d times v minus 1 for each of those integrals. We get this additional factor compared to our momentum space integrals. And then I copy the previous result, which is that factor e i to the mi 1 minus d over 2, 4 pi to the minus d over 2 to the power capital I, determinant of the matrix alpha to the power minus d over 2. And then the remaining result, e to the i w now. And of course, we need to say what the w is, and I forgot still one factor, namely uh, the determinant the determinant of the prefactor matrix of the quadratic term in our integration variable, which is now determinant of the matrix 1 over 4 a, also to the power minus d over 2. So that is our next step in the calculation of the integral. And so now we can just write down what uh, this w here is. w is uh, coming from here, so we complete the square, and then by completing the square, we end up with plus 1 over 4 times j transpose times the matrix a to the minus 1 times j, as always, right? This is what happens if we complete the square in terms of the abbreviations that we have introduced. Then uh, the remainder, which is independent of the integration, just gets copied. Minus 1 over 4 u transpose alpha to the minus 1 times u minus k prime. That is our w. So, and we can simplify this later. Let's also look at the other factors. So, the other factors are minus i to a certain power, plus i to a certain power, so there is a cancellation. So the uh, i appears to the power i to the power this, to the overall power i minus v, v minus 1, and this is exactly the number of loops. i minus v plus 1 is the number of loops. So we get i to the power 1 minus d over 2 to the power number of loops. And that should sound familiar, because that is also the power of i that we obtained previously in our simpler alpha representation without the u variables. So that fits very nicely. Then the 4 pi factors, 4 pi to the power um, minus d over 2. To which overall power do they appear? So well, 4 pi to this power 4 pi to this power times i, so we get 4 pi to the power minus d over 2 to the overall power i plus v minus 1. So that sounds unfamiliar, but then we get this 2 pi here, uh, which goes in the opposite direction, so we, have, uh, we can make out of this a 4 pi to this power d over 2 times 2 times v minus 1 times one-half 
to the power d over 2 times 2 times v minus 1. And then combining this with the other four pi factors gives overall 4 pi to the power of loops. Again, like we had before. And then what remains is this factor of 1 half to some certain power. So let's write it here. 2 to the power, what is it? Minus d times v minus 1. So we have to keep track of this. And, uh, but that can be combined with a determinant of 1 over 4 a to the power minus d over 2. So what is A? A is a matrix, of course, but what is the rank of this matrix? The matrix has as many rows and columns as there are z variables, so it's a v minus 1 square matrix. So in the determinant, we can pull out a factor of 1 over 4, and we get 1 over 4 to the power v minus 1. So this whole thing, um, together with the factor 2 here, is nothing but determinant of A without any prefactor to the power minus d over 2. So that combines very nicely. So overall, our other factors are exactly the same as we always had, times the additional determinant of just the matrix A to the appropriate power. So with all of that being said, we can now write down the full result in a nice form. Let me delete the blackboard and write a box with a full result for everything where we plug in all these factors into the final result and we bring it to a nice form and then I will also once again write down all the definitions of the matrices. So the definition of the matrix A and uh, we will write down the appropriate formula for the J. So let's first clean the blackboard. So let us write down the full result once again, including all the factors and write it in a beautiful way. So our result is minus i to the power of capital I as always, and then we get this usual factor that we always had, i to the power 1 minus d over 2 times 4 pi to the power minus d over 2, and this overall factor comes to the power of loops. Then. What remains is just the alpha integral, and that was what we were searching for, namely our expression of the original integral in terms of alphas. We have achieved that, and the result is the integrand u to the power minus d over 2 times e to the iw. And now let's give the definitions. Our semantic polynomial curly u turns out in this case to be the product of uh, these determinants, namely the determinant of A to this power times the determinant of the diagonal alpha matrix to the same power. So U is given by the determinant alpha times the determinant of the matrix A. And clearly, uh, if we neglect the U variables, then this must be the same expression as we had before. So like with a Fourier transformation, this decomposition is of course unique. So therefore that u must be the same u as we always had, and so we know immediately that this can also be written as the sum over all spanning trees, p product i outside the tree of the alpha i, as we always knew. So this is a new representation of the semantic polynomial as a product of those two matrices. So the definition of the matrices are, A was given already over there, so A is the reduced incidence matrix, B times the matrix alpha to the minus one times B transpose. So it's a symmetric matrix. And the matrix alpha is the diagonal matrix consisting of all the alphas on the diagonal. Then our W, which appears in the exponent, is now written here, and we have to insert our J. J was given at the top um, on the right, so it contains the momenta, P, but it also contains the U variables, times 1 over 4, so we can combine it with a factor 2 over there, so in that way we obtain for W the representation 
P transpose underscore minus one half U transpose alpha to the minus one B transpose this times A times P underscore minus one half B alpha to the minus one times U. So this is just the expanded form where we plug in our J and cancel the one over four. And then what comes next is uh, just copied one over four U transpose alpha to the minus one times U minus K prime. So now you have it, some of you have already asked what is the explicit way to calculate our W and here it is. This is the explicit form to compute directly the W, the exponent, which is a ratio of two semantic polynomials, V divided by U. And uh, this ratio is obtained by multiplying this uh, P modified with the U variable expression times the, sorry, this is of course the inverse matrix A to the minus one. The inverse of that matrix times uh, the same expression once again. So without the U variables, this entire expression is also valid, of course. So without the U variables, just this goes away and you get P transpose times A to the minus one times P. Um, and you see, so the previous um, results that we had without U variables could also be expressed in an explicit way by using this formalism and this derivation. And the explicit form of the result depends on this matrix A, and the matrix A is defined via the incidence matrix. So the incidence matrix provides a way to uh, write down an explicit formula for our loop integration. So let's give that a frame as well. That is the final result of this section of the lecture. We have now um, done our job and completed the derivation of the general alpha representation. We started with the integral which contains the exponential function of u times uh, line momenta in the uh, numerator. So uh, by taking derivatives with respect to the u variables, you can reconstruct any numerator that you want. So the expression is completely general and it contains the same semantic polynomial that we always had, but we found a new representation for it. And it contains um, a new modified W, but uh, as you see, the W is given by the old W without U variables, plus again a quadratic form in the U variables. Very good. <coughs> 